Dear friends, we live in amazing times, in an amazing society where people voluntarily poison themselves with contaminated, unnatural food. And to avoid confessing to ourselves the sad truth that we collectively cut the branch on which we are sitting, we have invented labels like organic food or bio food to deceive ourselves with the hope that that will be clean food. But in reality, most of it, not all, fortunately, but increasingly more and more of that so-called organic food is even more contaminated than the regular one. In this video, I'm not going to nag about how we are innocent victims being poisoned without our consent, because that is not the case. But instead, I'm gonna propose real and working solutions for remedying this situation while focusing on aspects which not so many people do. Okay, just a very short basics. If you were not aware yet that a lot of the organic food is not really chemical and poison free, you can find many such cases very well documented on this website, Natural News. They also have their own laboratory, so they test stuff. And actually lots or most of the ingredients which are included in uh, the so-called uh, health supplements or superfoods, they come from China and do we even need a laboratory? We know that almost everything that comes from China is with poisons of every type and description. Okay, so a couple of years ago, maybe five or so, I um, heard interesting stuff from a lady, very responsible senior citizen, who worked all her life in a laboratory which tests the food products as they are imp imported. That uh, is valid both for organic and non-organic stuff. So at that time, very roughly, some five years ago, the situation was as follows. Most of the so-called organic food, which was at least exported within uh, Europe, because she was dealing with the stuff that is being imported and exported, was more contaminated than the non-organic, with all kinds of uh, chemicals and pesticides and everything else. With small exceptions, at that time it was still England and Iceland and to some extent this can, the entire Scandinavian region, which still maintained some sort of uh, control preventing from uh, poisons getting into the organically labeled food. Now, how did the rest of Europe end into this sad situation? This is how they did it. Of course, the European Union stepped in to regulate what is the meaning of organic or bio, as we call it here. And if you think that in legal sense this means food free from any chemicals, you're far away from the truth as far as the Milky Way is far away in the sky. The legal definition of bio or organic food is simply food which has certain chemicals in a concentration below a given threshold. And the fact that some of the most dangerous poisons are not even taken into consideration when they were even listing the poisonous things, that, that of course they forgot to tell the public. Now what happened with the poisons which they actually listed? Now they said, you see, uh, in order to be possible for, uh, for the farmers to grow such food on already contaminated soil, we need high enough thresholds, otherwise, you know, the poor farmers, for which we care so much, they won't be able to grow organic food, and we, we want organic food, that's why we'll put such thresholds which will accommodate food which can be grown on any soil which means even a soil that has been poisoned for decades with anything you can imagine. So in this way, with their preposterous laws, they made it openly possible to sell any type of contaminated stuff labeled as organic. 
And as far as those really small manufacturers who really had some clean land and uh, still had some desire and uh, knowledge gathered through generations of how to really grow organic food, how they took care of them to suppress them is of course with uh, the laws for regulating and they call it encouraging small businesses. And these regulations are extremely effective. Um, I mean, most of the people who would normally grow clean food They, they cannot do it because of these regulations. For example, I have a clean land here that has, has been uninhabited for a very long time. And I, I don't put poisons. I cannot s s sell plants or grow things. It requires so much paperwork that I will not have time to grow it. And even if I decide to do all this, at the end, they will take everything that I earn as taxes. For example, in my case, it won't be directly a tax on my income, that would be bearable, but all the other fees, like registering as a company, as an employer, as this and that, that will incur me such costs that I will be at lost practically if I want to grow uh, 10 plants, 10 tomato plants and sell them. And I know how to do that because my grandmother, she did it, I saw how she did it. But I'm not really allowed to do it. Even for growing and selling the tomatoes of five plants, I'll need to also attend lengthy courses on agriculture because legally I should not know how to grow those tomatoes. Well, some people love the earth and some small manufacturers of real organic stuff, they survived all this, they managed. So what they do with them? Germany, the best example, they have really gangs of people specially hired to harass such manufacturers. What they do is they make up some new rule, which is of course stupid and useless, and Immediately after that, they send the gang to various small manufacturers. They arrive on the spot. Do you know that there is this new regulation and you, you don't have this formality and here is your fine. Uh-huh. Yeah. 5,000. Of course, they never do anything like this to companies like Google, which I heard in a speech in the European Parliament doesn't even pay any taxes at all. And nobody was interested in holding them responsible. Yeah, no interest in that. So this particular tactic, I heard about it from a real organic people in Germany. I don't know if they do this in every European country, but I don't wonder that the so-called bio food from Germany is one of the most contaminated in Europe. It can rival only Spain. Okay, so something else very interesting that I heard from that uh, lady who worked in such a laboratory for testing and that impressed me really a lot. So the important thing is that all the vegetables and fruits, um, they have some sort of um, natural defense against uh, such chemicals. The different varieties of fruits and vegetables, they have their own threshold. They, even if uh, they're um, grown in a very polluted soil, they don't suck um, more poisons than their threshold of sucking, so to say. And the most unique vegetable in from this perspective is the beetroot. Now, although the beetroot is a wonderful, I mean, medicine by itself, sadly, it has the ability to absorb poisons in greatest concentration out of all the normal vegetables that we use. And that is why there have been cases in which um, people decide to go, for example, on a uh, raw juice diet and they read about the benefits of uh, beetroot juice, which are really fantastic. And they drink lots of it every day and they get so heavily poisoned that they have to be hospitalized. And uh, 
suffer severe health problems, very severe. And also she told me that more sensitive people feel nauseous when they eat lots of um, vegetables or fruits which are heavily poisoned. And then that made me realize what has been going on because um, in, during all my life I always noticed that sometimes when I eat beetroot I uh, get very sick immediately. I really vomit, sorry to say that. But the strange thing, which I never understood why, is why sometimes it happens with beetroot while other times it's just fine. But when I heard what she explained, actually that's normal because I'm extremely sensitive and when I eat poisoned beetroot, that's what happens to me. Now, at that time, I heard her quickly list like all the, the most common fruits and vegetables and uh, which of them can uh, absorb more poisons and which are uh, less prone to such absorption. For example, onions were some of the safest. They can absorb very little poisons. The potatoes were also on the safer side. I also remember that uh, pears were better than apples. And then, sorry, it's so many years, I just forgot. I thought I will be able to find this such a list somewhere, but I haven't been able to find it. If any of you can help me find this information, please submit it using the contact options on megalits.org and I will post it in the description of this video. Another practical thing, besides avoiding the varieties of fruits and vegetables which can absorb more poisons, is to revise our understanding of what is healthy food and also traditional food, because traditional is um, also kind of a synonymous of healthy food. Uh, because it is opposed to the modern fast food or microwaved food. Now, most of what is called on TV ads and all kinds of popular shows, healthy food, like for example, muesli or things like this, is usually not much better than the junk food, if not worse. Or another example, we get so many so-called stevia sweeteners. Now, the stevia itself is a really good thing. But sadly, 99 of the so-called stevia sweeteners have some sort of, I don't know, 1% or less stevia flavor. And the rest are sweeteners which are more poisonous than refined sugar, even. And yet the mainstream sources will list them as healthy or sugar substitutes. I mean, in a negative sense, yes, but they imply that it is positive. So get sure you're informed about these things. The best source that I know of is again naturalnews.com. But here in this video, I'll uh, talk about stuff which is uh, not known so much. For example, our concept of uh, what our forefathers ate. So what people discovered in Russia because um, as you know from my other videos, they are delving seriously into their history now. It is um, rapidly gaining momentum. And it turned out what uh, normally it is considered as traditional food was a menu introduced with military power by those same, very same foreign forces which rewrote the history of Russia and ruined everything they could a couple of centuries ago over there, they literally banned the large variety of fruits and vegetables which were really traditional and forced the people to eat new stuff. For example, the most famous staple food from the original stuff was replaced was the amaranth. And what did they replace it with? White flour yeast, Th these things are not good for us, while the amaranth is, is really a good thing. 
Of course, this war on everything good in Russia was aided by other means as well, like 200 years ago the climate all of a sudden became very cold over there, so whatever was left from the old fruits and vegetables became difficult to grow, but that's another topic. And I don't have any evidence yet that uh, this was the case uh, all over Europe and all over the world, but when I see how things unfold, first the Russian people find out that it was like this in their land and then for so many things about the history, I receive so many emails with uh, people confirming that it was the same in their land. So probably if we really want to know what our forefathers ate, we should look at the diet of the uncontacted tribes and not fall for the mainstream, probably lies, which convince us that uh, people were alcoholics and ate this uh, things that now we call historic diet, for example, in Europe, probably it wasn't like that. And uh, also in Russia there, they have collected evidence that alcoholism was forced with laws, was introduced very recently. And I absolutely believe this because I can see how they promote alcoholism with uh, advertising nowadays and also by pretending to be spaced out about the impact of alcoholism and its extremely fast increasing rate. This poses really a major danger to our society. They have all kinds of security laws they completely ban all kinds of really healing herbs just because a single person had a side effect from using them. The side effect disappeared, but the, the herb is banned. Yet people die from alcoholism by thousands, by millions, not to speak of those who remain alive and suffer lifelong. And yet no measures are taken at all I'm not talking at this point about banning alcohol. That will be, of course, impossible. The, the addiction is so strongly rooted. But at least, let's say, taking some basic measures that children don't drink, even that is not done. In an alarming rate, they are drinking competitions, small children. Uh, they organize it on YouTube, they drink vodka until they fall in coma. It's very common. 10% of the children of the age of 10 already drink alcohol regularly. And these kids, they use also uh, strong alcohol, which damages their liver for life. There was even a book, I don't know, The Vodka Generation or The Vodka Children. Your hairs will stand on end when you read the statistics over there. And people are even further encouraged into alcoholism by suggesting to them that you see actually the uh, alcohol factories, they will make you prosperous. So that's why they are good. They are good for the economy, which is such a lie. You can be prosperous by making healthy drinks as well. It doesn't have to be poisonous necessarily to make you prosperous. And what about the reports and countless uh, calculations made by people who are actually social engineers? They have been trying to evaluate the damages made by alcohol of the economy because uh, alcohol ruins lives, if that can be even expressed with money, but at least it can be expressed in terms of uh, health care expenditure in terms of how much it uh, facilitates crime because large percentages of the crimes are facilitated by alcohol. So alcohol is extremely harmful to the economy. What to speak of uh, the moral decay which will eventually, if uh, 
left to spread with such a speed will wipe us out almost completely. All this is ignored and indeed they are suggesting us on TV that uh, alcohol production is prosperous and good for us. And the suggestions to do something about uh, alcohol are laughed at because, you see, our forefathers have been drinking since time immemorial. You think you will do something now? No, they were not drinking since time immemorial. They are drinking since very recent time when this was introduced in the society. Before that, there were some alcoholic beverages with low content apparently again this is uh, only russian sources but alcoholic beverages had low percentage of um, alcohol in them they were not used in mass as we do now and very importantly they didn't have all the poisonous chemicals which are not required to have alcohol this is just like an addition to all the other nonsense, especially in the uh, wine and especially in the stronger vodkas. In many countries, they add scary chemicals. The situation is very similar uh, like that of the tobacco. People are scared, uh, are artificially unnecessarily scared. Tobacco is bad for you and they even put all these gruesome images. Tobacco is a sacred plant. The uh, pure organic tobacco, when used in the context of shamanic ceremonies, is very good for you. The things went wrong when they started uh, adding terribly harmful chemicals to the cigarettes to make them more addictive and I don't know for what else. And on the top of that, they blame it all on the sacred plant. And now let's start with the really major solutions. First of all, we have to understand that it has been proven again and again that thought impacts what we call gross matter. There are countless experiments about that. I will not uh, mention them also in quantum physics. It touches this topic. But how does it apply to food? The only information I have on this uh, subject comes from the channeled set material, which I still find the most genius writing that I know of on Earth. And he says that this motto of uh, you are what you eat is only partially true. He says it is some 30% true and the rest is a lot how we view our food apparently our intention can change the way these often unavoidable poisons in our food affect us so even though we ended up in this strange era when most of the food is poisoned still we can do a lot for example we can grow our organic sprouts even if we live in a city but even when we can't grow on or manufacture our own food, we should have the proper attitude when we eat. For example, if we eat everything with uh, this bitterness in our thoughts of how the governments are poisoning uh, us alive, this will make the food 70% more poisonous according to the percentage given by set. It's not that we should deceive ourselves that they there are no poisons like the ostriches, they bury their head. But the trick is to concentrate on the positive aspect of the things. And there is a good aspect in everything. Feel lucky that you even have a computer to listen to this video and you presumably have some food because millions of people who are not less of a human than me and you, they are forced to scavenge the garbage piles to get food. So quite few people will be concerned and uh, will be willing to pay more for organic food, which is actually highly questionable. And yet they will not give so much attention to what kind of water are they drinking. All kinds of uh, poisonous and harmful for the health uh, Chemicals are included in the water supply of 
most of the world. Yes, at some places people still get pure water, but we just can't be sure even whether or not our water is pure. And even if we do find out, tomorrow the situation may change and probably it won't be for the better, looking at where the world is going and what direction. So I would highly recommend you to get a device for distilling water and start using only distilled water. Most of the even expensive water filters simply don't do the job they claim they are doing. So better to be safe. And I can assure you with absolute certainty that all that talk, that distilled water, which is nothing else but actually pure water, I want to assure you that pure water will not soften your bones and make them sick. That's nothing else but a shameless lie backed by no research whatsoever which has been spread to trick you into drinking all the stuff they put in water. So don't fall for all the deceit of this smear campaign of pure water. I'm not only a highly sensitive person, but especially my bones are very, very sensitive even to minor fluctuation in weather or too much work or anything sour or it's such a long list to what my bones are sensitive to. And I'm using only distilled water, so if it was harming the bones especially, it would have rendered me boneless by now. No, distilled water doesn't harm you at all, has not harmed me, nor many other people who are also on distilled water for a very long time. And even if you have the slightest doubt that uh, the lower mineralization of the distilled water can harm you, then just put a pinch of uh, soda bicarbonate in the water container and that will increase the mineralization and will, in addition, make the water even more healthy because uh, drinking some soda is also another type of cure. Of course, it, it has its uh, dosage and uh, way to take it. It's not like the more the better. But this thing with the pinch of soda, this was actually recommended by mainstream sources. So if you believe them, even a little bit that distilled water can harm you, do what they suggest. And that's, that is one thing that, uh, one point that I agree with them on. So there is a lot of talk on TV and in the mainstream media about healthy eating. And they're really putting in our heads all the time that you are what you eat and then they are like suggesting to us to go for the bio food and that is a very clever and effective trick because first of all this definition that uh, sounds to many like new age and progressive that we are what we eat is actually meant to anchor us more into this uh, materialistic paradigm and hide from us the real knowledge which is we are what we think more than what we eat. So that's one aspect of the clever trick. And the other aspect is that uh, they're like channeling us into this uh, bio-organic food, which is often worse than the non-bio and non-organic, with some exceptions. Again, I hope that in Iceland and uh, in many Scandinavian countries, they're still sticking to some sort of standards in terms of what is organic. But those are sadly just exceptions. So the main thing is that uh, um, because of all this big talk, how important is their organic food, it is uh, below the radar of most people how harmful and how much more harmful are other things like first I spoke about the water and now about the death towers. Up until some half an year ago I knew that uh, these things are very dangerous and harmful. I had no clue how much pain they have been causing me personally and I didn't even know that I can do a lot about it. 
until somebody casually didn't uh, tell me to try the blue shield device and I saw I can try it for free and very casually I got one and uh, tested it without um, higher expectation with slightly negative expectations to be honest because before that I tried another device which made me sick and I was shocked by the positive effect of this uh, blue shield device this is my review of it posted on my other channel so many people think that just because they are doing some gymnastic which has been named yoga for some unknown to me reason and because they eat muesli which is not even healthy and because they take spirulina or chlorella tablets which are by the way imported from china and enriched with full spectrum of heavy metals they think that because of all these things which they have heard from the tv by the way they think that they are taking good care of their health but after the changes which i experienced the absolutely unexpected and mind-blowing changes which i experienced after the blue shield i really want to assure you that without proper um, emf protection protection from these harmful frequencies your list of things to do to live healthy might be lacking one of the most important items now let me share with you what actually works because most of the products which provide so-called emf protection are scams they don't work at all one thing which is genuine and will really protect you from many types of harmful radiation are the canopies made of silver fiber they are cheap meters which detect this uh, type of frequencies and everybody can easily measure how polluted is it outside the canopy and inside it is nearly zero or zero depending on the quality the, of the fiber used these canopies tend to be rather expensive like thousand dollars or so cheaper alternatives could be ordered from china and some of them do work they are paints so you can shield your entire home and they also work most definitely but then you can't use any wi-fi devices including cell phones inside the home because the harmful vibrations will be kind of trapped inside and will make it worse there are cheap solutions as well, like even aluminium screen for insects or some sort of uh, safety blankets, I believe they call them. But of course, they may not look very pleasing to the eye if you put them on the walls of your home. But most of these things provide nearly perfect blockage for the malevolent frequencies or at least most of the types that we know of there is also clothing and hats made of silver fiber now what doesn't work are all those uh, hundreds of types of harmonizing stickers for radiation protection sold on Amazon and other dubious websites including uh, harmonizing pendants of all type description and another thing that surely doesn't work is orgon at least for protection against uh, such radiation I'm not saying orgon is a scam altogether this is an extremely informative video which I would advise you to care carefully watch till the end because it not only uh, debunks the so-called uh, radiation protection allegedly provided but by uh, Orgon or Orgonite but it will also give you clues how to correctly perform tests or how to understand the tests that you can see on YouTube about what works and what doesn't 
Now, some of you may wonder then why all these products like stickers, harmonizing pendants and other useless stuff, why do they often have uh, positive reviews or high rating on Amazon? The reasons can be quite interesting. First of all, uh, not uh, there are quite a lot of fake reviews on Amazon, even verified purchases are often uh, fake, as I found out uh, very recently. I didn't even know that before. I also thought they are written by uh, genuine customers. Add reason for the great number of positive reviews is that they could be written simply by delusional, confused New Age people. Unfortunately, there is so much New Age nonsense that the real New Age wisdom is getting like buried alive under the pile of garbage on top. And then the most interesting uh, point here is that um, actually many people could be really feeling benefits from the devices that they have purchased, even though they are fake, just because they have turned them into magical protection devices with the power of their own belief. Now, I don't know how, to what an extent that could be really neutralizing the effects of the radiation, but as far as uh, the readings of the devices, of the meters for such radiation, they don't seem to show any difference. But anyhow, the people could be feeling indeed better just because they imagine that uh, the given pendant or sticker is helping them. Now, the situation with the organ can be a bit special because there could be crystals inside and also very often it comes in pyramidal shape. Now, those things by themselves, they seem to have some sort of uh, magical effect. But again, I definitely don't advise you purchasing this often quite expensive organite products. You can make a pyramid out of paper at home or grow your own minerals and um, program them with your own intention. That will be much more powerful. And also it's uh, relatively easy and extremely cheap because some of the crystals can be grown just from common household substances. And also I see really a lot of uh, confusion about this organite in the new agey layers of society. Some people notice that it seems to be doing something and because of that they assume that it does all the miracles that somebody is telling, talking them into believing. And yet, on the other hand, just because there is such a cloud of nonsense all around this full organ or organ organite thing, we should not make the mistake and consider everything that is connected with that to be a nonsense. Apparently not. It seems some models of actual cloudbusters that's the name of the type of the devices. Apparently, some of them seem to be really very powerful. I don't know if they actually have any connection with organ as such, but anyhow, they seem to fall in the same category. So be aware, in this category, they are precious gems buried under tons of confusion. But in any case, all the remedies that I was suggesting, they were kind of superficial. If we really want to address the issue at its root, maybe not the deepest root, but a bit on a deeper level, is to really start collectively questioning ourselves why on earth do we continue voting and electing the people who organize all this poisoning and other crimes. 
The sad answer is that actually we don't care enough about this problem and that's why we allow minor factors to cloud our vision. And that's why when election time comes, we don't give priority to the most important, which is to get rid of those traitors who are so cruel that they don't mind making earth hell, even though in most cases they have even children who will live in such a hell. So when we vote, our priority should be to elect people who at least turn the stirring will in direction of becoming independent of this world mafia of banksters. But instead of that, people are satisfied with other factors when they vote. For example, I have a friend and I asked him for which party did you vote? And he told me it's uh, this and this party and this is exactly the party which uh, supports this globalization or in other words, the program of rapid enslavement and zombification of the entire world and the common denominator. But I asked him why and he said, you see, they are humane. For example, they have new laws that... Um, like pregnant women cannot be fired from work. So that's why they're very humane and I vote for them. So I don't know if this is uh, really a fair law uh, about the pregnant women. This is irrelevant. But even if this is the most fantastic law that we can come up with, I mean, what's the use of all this when the women very soon will be giving birth to zombies instead of people even? And what's the use of such a law when the women are robbed from their earnings all their life, like 70-80% uh, of all the fruits of what men and women earn is uh, taken away with all kinds of taxes, uh, fees and other uh, compulsory payments and then is uh, given to the bankers who fund all kinds of criminal activity with it. I mean, if the women were not robbed in such a terrible way to start with, then they wouldn't have any financial difficulties anyway when they are pregnant because nobody would have financial difficulties. 100% of the poverty in, at the current moment on earth is artificially created. There is no lack of resources. In this video of mine, I talk more about how voting can change the world very easily and very painlessly. So I went into this uh, topic of the voting not because I have any hope that this may happen in reality, just looking at the rate at which alcoholism is spreading and at the rate at which our thinking capacity is being rapidly lowered by all these um, electrom harmful electromagnetic frequencies around us, I can only expect that people will be able to think less and less. So I don't even expect them to become wiser when they vote, but I just wanted to illustrate that all our miseries are self-inflicted. So this list of protective measures is by no way complete. In reality, we don't have even proper information on what are they doing to us. We hear new stuff like, for example, using sound, uh, which the human ear cannot hear. But even if we don't hear it, that doesn't make it less powerful. You can see so many experiments here on YouTube on how sound affects matter or even moves objects. From other sources, we hear also, for example, that the 
hard implants that have been taken out of many people, so they are not imaginary, they really exist. That is retro fashion. Apparently, the newest technology they have developed is like liquid. And so the unsuspecting victims, which could be almost all of us, by the way, they may go in, uh, to the doctor and get some sort of injection for an entirely different problem. But besides the presumable medicine in the liquid that is injected in them, there is also like an implant which uh, goes in their blood and cannot be removed. Unlike the device-like implants, which can be surgically removed. Now let's look at all this from a higher perspective. Most people on Earth either don't understand or simply don't care that uh, they are being turned into zombies, remotely controlled, that they are losing their independence, their very human form they are losing, besides their basic human rights, which apparently we have lost long ago. And if nothing intervenes, we are at the current moment in kind of free fall into a bizarre world where we are going to be forced to inhabit bodies which have far, far lower intelligence capacity than even what we have now. The phenomena, which is in medical terms called mental fog, will be spreading like the artificial fog sprayed by the airplanes which do the poison trailing. And in addition to that, most people will spend large portions of their life in sickness, which will considerably reduce the capacity to do anything, basically. And this entire tragical comedy will unfold on the background of ever more increasing so-called natural disasters. Hurricane, floods, sinkholes. There are various... Uh, weather modification and weather control programs. There is tangible proof that uh, this type of institutions have knowledge to control such processes on Earth to a very large extent. We don't even know, is there any natural factor left even in so-called natural disasters? And the only way to sail safely through such turbulent waters is to develop our connection with uh, what is called by many higher self, others call it the energetic grid of the universe, or even relations to angels for those who prefer, prefer more personalized expressions. We'll need those things because the mental fog will be getting so dense and dense during the upcoming years that very few people will be left who are able to think straight. And the society, what kind of scary society will that be? And I didn't even mention that they have even technologies for inserting foreign thoughts, third-party ideas into the psyche of people. But all in all, after all, in overall, there is no need to worry about anything. Because all this sad theater is to be taken as seriously as one of those scary roller coaster rides where they take you in dark tunnels and then they show you skeletons and it's very steep and scary at great speed. And people get really scared over there, although the skeletons are absolutely fake. These are not really dead people and there is no danger from falling from your seat because you are well fastened. That's how they make the roller coasters. They make them safe. And all this scary stuff that is currently happening to the human race is equally real as the roller coaster scary things. It's all just props, decoration, nothing is real, we live in a holographic world and all these uh, scary things and events and thoughts and everything else, these are just symbols and to the extent that we take them seriously, we will be taken away by the current which they try to simulate and that's not bad 
That's why we came for this roller coaster to experience all this. But if your connection to your higher essence is strong, it can make a big difference in your daily life because you will be able to withdraw from the turbulent murky waters when it gets really bad or whenever you simply wish to take rest or you wish to know what's going on from a higher perspective. And if your connection to your higher self is not strong enough yet, now is the time to practice every day because it takes time to clear all those channels when you're in the world pool of scary events when you are drowning and screaming you can't sit and meditate at that time you are drowning here again i will recommend you this resource it's absolutely free and it's for all stages of yoga from beginner to very advanced and this is the ultimate protection once your connection with the higher self is established. No matter how much they irradiate and poison you and even cage your brain in permanent mental fog, still you will enjoy the independence of your spirit. While the people who believe that their consciousness is just a product of the body or they believe that they simply cannot access any other higher source of consciousness, those people, they may end up really cornered and caged, forced to become zombies, remotely controlled, intelligent, conscious devices, but they will not be enslaved by a higher power against which they are powerless. They will be enslaved by their own powers which they are using against themselves as suggested by somebody else. It's like in court. The instigator of a crime is certainly held responsible to some extent. Only the main responsible person remains the one who actually carried out the action.